In this video we're going to learn how to check for the event of the value of a cell being changed. We're going to learn how to move the position of the current cell. We're also going to learn how to get the um, value of that current cell. How to set the, um, the column headers so that they don't just say 1, 2, 3, 4, but they say what we want to. In our case it's going to be A, B, C, etc. And then how to use the Q widget item to set the value of a cell. That sounds quite a long, but this will actually be quite a short video. OK, so let's code our program here. So we need a Q widget item because we said we're going to use that later. Um, I'm going to initialize this widget because I do want to be setting a signal when I, the cell is changed. And what I like to do is put that in my own initialization function that calls within the, the constructor, if you like, here. And I'm going to call that um, init underscore UI which is what I tend to do. And now we've got that, we're going to define it. That's def init underscore UI. And all, the only thing I'm going to put in there is a signal when, which is the for the event when a cell is changed. So we're going to call that self dot cell change you can see there are plenty here to pick from you can play with those so cell changed and that one's going to be dot connect just like it is in every other instance that we've done this is the the new um, PyQt5 way of calling um, or responding to events and we're going to call it C current and so now what I need to do is define what happens when we change a cell. So we're going to call this C current and I'm going to get most of this from where I've got before. So let me just copy this function over and it will speed things up if I just explain to you what's going on. So we've got row equals self dot, um, self dot current row. So all this does um, where the cell that's been activated and obviously it will be activated because we've clicked in there it says what row is that at and we get the same thing for column and then value here it gets the value which is actually just the address um, just like having a button if you like um, of the item at row column that we've got from here I actually want the text that that's represented by so we're going to change the value to text and I could put this dot text at the end here and just to show that we can use it, we can print the current cell, um, so, you know, tell them where we are, and we're going to actually print what's in there as well. So let's just see that happening. So if let's put a 4 here, it doesn't really matter. And down at the bottom it says you're in cell 0, 0, um, and in this cell we have number 4. Let's put a 6 in that one. It now tells me we're at cell 1, 1, and we've got a 6. So that works fine. So we've done a few things that we said we're going to do. The next thing I want to do is, in fact, I could just run this again. Rather than having 1, 2, you know, across to 10, let's make it so we've got A, B, C instead. And to do that, we need a list um, of the headers that we want to use. So I'm going to call mine column headers, and I've just got this list A, B, C, D, up to J. And then what we do is we use self dot and then it's form widget and it's just set um, horizontal header labels and then all we do is put in here you can see there a list of strings of those column headers and ask the column headers so let's run that now see what happens and now you can see rather than one two it goes up to um, a to j just one point out here we've not really talking about this but although this says one two three four and before this said one this is actually cell zero zero it's a little bit confusing to show you put two in there and that's cell zero zero and again notice it says zero zero it doesn't use the a that's just the labels we've got at the top um okay so the next thing i want to do is how can i put a value in a cell and um at this for this video we're actually going to put a uh, a text 
um, value in there. I will show you in the next video how to put an integer in there. So let's do um, number equals Q table widget item. So obviously it makes sense that the things that go in a Q um, widget table might be something different. And um, I'm just going to call mine um, 10. So although that is a number, I'm going to enter it as text. And then I'm going to do self dot form widget. Dot, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the current um, cell and I'm going to call that 1 1 and I'll explain why just afterwards and then the next thing I'm going to do is do self form widget dot set item so I'm going to set although when we look up here we got the item in a cell now we're going to set the item in a cell and I'm going to put it at the same place one one comma number now let's run that and you can see it's put 10 in there now because we changed the value in that cell it's going to call this event and it's told us yes you've put it in one one and you've changed the value to 10. let's just see that's all nice there's nothing red nothing's gone wrong let's get rid of this one here and now run it and there we go we've got these issues going on here it says value equals value dot text says you can't do that because it's a return type none and um, what that means is that it called the um, cell changed but because we didn't actually move um, to we didn't actually activate this cell we just put a value in that cell and yet we changed its value it doesn't know what to do with row and column here so it can't actually get a value here so all it gets is none because there's nothing stored there so that's why let's get rid of that if I actually move to the cell first we get something that works with our errors I hope you enjoyed the video if you did think about subscribing I've included a link to the code that I've used in the video below in the description. Stay in infield with Winfield.